Hi, I'm David Kusi Uzu, 24, half away, half Ashanti. I want to be a professional footballer. Football is one particular game that most Ghanaians like or love a lot. For instance, my two children have started kicking already. Everything they see, they kick around. I quite remember I was telling them, look, this is not a field. And this is how it, it begins. They know their football and they always want to be with their football. <laughs> it's, it's everywhere in Africa after school or even break time. Yeah, yes. They, they call it four corners. One, two, three, four. So if they score you, another will come. Yeah, so that's what we used to play. Sometimes we go to the food and we move our uniforms and let's put our singlet and you see. The more people will be running. And when it's break over, you have to wear your shirt and get inside. After, you have to play for some time before you get back to the house. Maybe you get back to the house, maybe you get back to the house, instead of you to do something or read through your boots, somebody will just be standing at the back of your window. Tell you, let's go and play football. And you have to. The youth today are looking at it from the different angle. It is now business. For that matter, they're looking at the money they can make out of it. It used to be the love of it. I want to be a football star. I want to be a footballer. Oh, my dream is to become a football star. My future dream is to be a professional footballer. To play in the major league. Yeah, my dreams is to play in the European teams. One of the best teams in Europe. My dream is to play in Europe. My dream to be in Europe. My dream is to be in Europe. Me want to be a professional footballer. I always train because they say a uh, what a slogan: uh, hard work doesn't break the bone, but it makes the body strong. So I always try to train hard. Once the bones, it's no broken. I know how to survive. Most of the Premier teams send some of their scouts to come and watch and pick some players out. Yeah. So as for that part, we are the best over there. Yeah, nobody beats us. <laughs> we have something in Ga, music in Ga, that when you hear the supporters singing, you can never beat us. Solo no, I feel a solo no. Solo no, I feel a solo no. Solo no new, I feel a solo no new. And you see, literally, it means that what has passed is gone. This time, we will face you. We fight for the bones, we fight until the bones is rotten. If the result will come, we fight until we get the bones. As a folk has been a traditional club formed in 1911. It has large followers. It's national in character because when you go to every region, House of Folk is there. So it makes the work very, very challenging uh, since uh, you need to satisfy the needs of all the supporters in the region because they are the heartbeat of the club. You know, House of Oak is the only team in Ghana. There are two teams in Ghana, Hearts and the rest. Yeah, my family is Hearts and Hearts is my family. And we win more matches than we lose. So you can see that this is the only club that has won the league six consecutive years. This is the only club that has been able to win more knockout than any other person. We've won the league 20 times. As I think Otoko claimed, they've won 21, but three of them are abridged. You understand? So anything could have happened. This is a club that has won, won the first Confederation Cup in Africa. And this is a club that has won the Super Cup and the Champions League, only club from Ghana that have done that. So people would like to associate with what, such achievements. So a lot of motivation comes in. Because if you're a player, you like you want to win a trophy, coming to House of Hope, you know that you'll get it and that will motivate them to come. Getting football is very special. It's 
sometimes, but sometimes too, it's awful. After training, if there is something else to do, you have to do to get money. Yeah. The player needs to have his basic facilities to be able to play better. Use the right shin guard, use the right boots, use the balance right. The person himself is already dropped out. The person himself is coming from a broken home. The person himself has the parents are against him being a footballer. Our parents always would like uh, to you to be either a doctor or a lawyer, and they have that kind of mentality, forgetting that you also have your own talent that you want to develop. When you have a family meeting, you all go to your mom's place and then you come say, hey, okay, see, you just stop playing the football and go and get some work to you. <laughs> That's what they say. Actually, we didn't, we didn't go up much in an, uh, an elite level. Like say, uh, people used to say in our slogan that about like there was money in the house, so we didn't know that. But we at least we have to work hard to survive. Yeah. Okay. This is where I live. This is my area. So I'm taking you to my area, my hood. This Africa, so you, you, you shouldn't mind where some places have been shown. You know, it was hard sometimes you know, to get a boot or just say or shinga to play football. Because if you go to a new team, it will assess you first. They won't give you all the sport kit first. You have to assess you before if you are good. Then they sit down with you, talk to you before they sign you. So. Sometimes it's very difficult if you're going to a new team. Yeah, it's very, very difficult. Maybe you go there, you see 60 people on the park. 60 people coming to train. Maybe they'll pick 23 or 25. So if you have the talent and you don't have the connections, you still stay back. Sometimes they know you are good, but they won't pick you. Yeah, because maybe you just came there to somebody. Some of the coaches too, they, they call it brown envelope. Brown envelope. It, it's, it's money, that's what they call it, the brown envelope. Because they put money inside, and if they come, or coach, the way take this, and then they give it to you. So that, like, if the coach is coming to select, they will select the person who he brought, or maybe the player himself gave the coach the money for him to be selected. This is my crib. This is where I used to live. Okay. You are welcome to my humble, sweet, nice, although it's not nice, but it's cool for me. Gallons. I used to fetch with that because you know they lock the tap sometimes, so you have to get water. It's make them. It's illegal, I see. Yeah, enjoy some time. I went to Cape Coast. I heard of a man who was grooming some players. So I decided to go and give it a try and see. Food to eat sometimes is very hard. The food they cook for us too is not uh, hygienic or let me say not good for you. Like if you are in the house, yeah. They don't give us money. We are there. Yeah, so we should train. 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 So I uh, watched like three months. Nothing. I didn't hear anything. Nothing was going on. We were just training and playing matches. Just training and playing matches. So I talked to some of my colleagues. Ah, this this thing is not going away because what the man told us, we haven't seen anything. He said we were going to South Africa after three months. But after three months, you are still there. Nothing. So 
when I was living, I, I in fact, I didn't tell the man and the coach. <laughs> I just went to pack my bag and came to Accra. <laughs> but when I came, people were talking to me. Oh, I have I stopped playing football? Have I stopped playing football? So no, but I wasn't training because almost like three months back Cape Coast, I was training like, huh, like you're going to play World Cup. <laughs> it was very bad. So when I came, I haven't trained. So people were asking me, if I stopped playing football, if I stopped playing football, I said, oh, no, I haven't stopped. So I shouldn't stop, I should keep on, I should keep on, I should pray. So listening to people and, you know, knowing I can do that, I just started training it. My God's grace. Everything is okay. People see it as a religion. They follow it passionately. People weep, be it a... Uh, uh, from whatever social level. The last time we lost a match, I saw a police officer, a very senior police officer, weeping, and I felt sad. So millions of people's hearts are broken. Well, that is why we always tell the players, you are carrying millions of people's hearts, and you need to deliver them for them to be happy. Immediately you start working here, they tell you. As a player, they sit you down and say, look, this is a club with a large followers. This is a club that belongs to the elite group. This is a club you must respect everybody, irrespective of where they come from. Because you find all of them across board. For instance, I'll give you an example. I just got down, I was entering my house. Somebody just came and said, excuse me, walk 50 meters and you find your player drinking over there. I walked and I saw them, you see. So they become like watchdogs within the environment. And, and within the communities, and they will make sure that you don't have your freedom. That doesn't make good for some of the players. Annoying to them. Uh, sometimes they don't even let you train on the training ground. But I hope, like outside, it's not like that. But yeah, they can come and stand on the training ground and insult you, do you a lot of things, up to players like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. Just let like, the supporters who are not much more educated about how to support a team. Yeah, they just do the, what they like because they are supporting this team. Yeah. I always put it like a pyramid. When it comes to the basic basis, you realize that there are a lot of people there, but it's only few that are able to climb. And it depends on the mentality you have. You, and it depends on, let's say, the guidance that they have. Because most of them uh, might be talented, but might not be able to grow due to other factors in their life. Anywhere I get to go, I know I can play. Yeah. Anywhere I step my foot right now, I know I can play. So I'm just praying to God. Oak tree. It's a tree that can live for a century and beyond. It's a very stubborn tree. When you also look the dictionary of phrases, hearts of oak means unyielding. So it goes to tell you that the our forefathers knows very well that we were going to meet very difficult times. So we need that our colleagues, we need the symbols and things that can make us unyielding. When you look into our crests, we have a, a Latin word, the parastate vegetal, meaning there is virtue in courage. So whatever we do, our never say die spirit always guide us. So I have something that I say, I have no failure in my dictionary, I have challenges because I never say die. Never say die means you want to achieve something, you have to work hard so that you achieve it. So you don't give up until the bones are rotten. It's hard, but we are trying. It's hard because... <laughs> If you wait your hand, God will help you to go.